Okay, I wanted to uh, continue my discussion of periodic trends here, but before I continue, I'd like to just define some terms that we need to know about, okay? One term that I'm going to use in this video is called valence electrons, okay? Valence electrons are electrons in the outer energy level, okay? When I say the word atom in this video, I mean I'm talking about something that is neutral, a neutral particle, okay? A neutral atom has the same number of protons and electrons and thus has no charge. That is different than an ion. An ion is an atom that is either lost or gained electrons and then now has a charge. Ions can break down into two different types, those with positive charges and negative charges. The, positive, the ions with positive charges are called cations. Okay? The way to, mem to remember that is that the T in the middle here, there's a T there, the T kind of looks like a plus sign. Okay? So that would be a cation. An anion is a negative ion that has gained electrons. Right? You gain negative electrons, you become a negative ion. The way to remember that is A negative ion. Okay, so cations have lost electrons, uh, anions have gained electrons. Okay, and another term that's interrelated uh, with ions are called oxidation number, and that's when an atom gets together with another atom and either loses or gains electrons. Uh, it's going to have a charge associated with it, and, and typically when it's in uh, a compound, uh, we talk about it in terms of oxidation numbers, but we, we really don't need to go too far into that for this video. Okay. Now, one big thing to know is if an atom is going to create a cation, or if an atom is going to make an anion, and, and generally there's a line that you can draw, okay, in between the 5A, uh, the 4A and 5A groups, okay, everything to the east of this line is going to tend to make anions, while everything to the west of this line is going to make cations. And that has to do with electronegativity, okay? If you haven't seen this video yet, my, my video on electronegativity, you should definitely check that out. The atoms that are on the right hand side of the periodic table are more electronegative than the atoms that are on the left hand side. Okay, That means that if, if one of these ions on the right interacts with an ion on the left, it's going to take the electrons and gain them and thus make an anion while the cation, while these elements that are over here are going to uh, lose their electrons and make cations. So it's very handy to kind of know where this line is, okay? And, and this is just a general rule of thumb here, okay? It's not uh, perfect, but it's just a good way to know uh, what's going to make anions and cations, okay? So let's talk about the trends in ionic size as you go uh, through the periodic table. Okay, One thing to know is that cations are always smaller than the atoms from which they're formed. Okay, So if we have copper, if that's the relative size of the copper atom, then copper 2 plus would be smaller. Okay, And the opposite is true for when you form anions, okay? So in the case of chlorine, when you add an electron to chlorine, so if that's chlorine there, when you add an electron, chlorine is going to tend to get bigger, okay? Now, other than that, ionic size tends to increase going down a group and decrease going from left to right. That, I call that the snowman principle. Okay, particles get bigger as you go down the periodic table. Okay, and when you push that snowman over, 
get a little noise there. Okay, you see that the particles particles get smaller as you go through the periodic table. Okay, now it's different. There's one exception that you have to take into account. Okay, and that's that. Well, you can see the snowman here. Okay, getting bigger as you go down and smaller as you go across. You have to take into account that some atoms are going to want to make cations and some are going to make anions. And once you hit that line that's in the, that's in the periodic table, you're going to switch over from making cations to making anions, and then the atoms are going to get bigger. The ions are going to get bigger. So it, it gets it, the size decreases up to a certain point, and then once you cross that line, all of a sudden the size jumps up again to bigger particles. Okay, so let's see if we can see some practice here. Okay, now if you're comparing an atom, say oxygen, with its ion, you've got to decide what type of ion it's going to make. Is it going to make a cation or an anion? And that'll help you decide which is larger. Okay, well, oxygen is on the right hand side. Let's go back to the, uh, oxygen is on the right hand side. Of that special line, that means it's going to make an anion. Okay, and we know that anions, that's oxygen, we know that anions are bigger than their predecessor atom. So the ion in this case would be bigger. Okay, now what about boron? Okay, well, if we go back to our periodic table. We see that boron is actually on the left-hand side. It's going to make a cation. So in this case, boron would be bigger because the, the uh, ion that we're talking about, that's boron. Boron 3 plus would be smaller. Okay. Now, what if we're comparing two ions that are in the same group? Well. Remember the snowman principle, things get bigger as you go down the periodic table, okay? So iodine is lower on the periodic table than bromine is, therefore iodine is going to be bigger, okay? Now, what about these four right here? Which one's going to be the largest, okay? Well, you might think that potassium would be the largest because it's the farthest left, okay? But remember that once you switch over from cations to anions, you get a bump up in size. That means that selenium is actually going to be the biggest here. Okay?